To sum up the character of General Strong Vincent in three words, I can only say that he was a gallant soldier, a fine scholar, and a Christian gentleman. And when you say this, you have said all that can be said of any man. Strong Vincent was born June 17, 1837, in Waterford, Pennsylvania, to Bethuel B. Vincent and Sarah Ann Strong Vincent. When he was six years old, the family moved to Erie, where Vincent's father was a foundry operator. Strong made many friends at the old Erie Academy and demonstrated his strength and vigor as a young man working at his father's foundry. He attended Trinity College and graduated from Harvard University in 1859 going on to study and practice law with attorney William Lane at an office overlooking Erie's historic Perry Square. With the outbreak of the Civil War in April of 1861, Vincent hurried to marry his longtime sweetheart, Elizabeth Carter, before joining the Union Army in a standard yet uneventful 90-day enlistment. He re-enlisted in September of the same year for a three-year term with the 83rd Pennsylvania Volunteer Regiment and was soon after elected major by the enlisted men. Vincent quickly moved up the ranks and was promoted to colonel in August of 1862. He first led his regiment at the Battle of Fredericksburg in December 1862, even after nearly succumbing to malaria the previous summer. Then, on July 2, 1863, at the age of 26, Colonel Strong Vincent's excellence in leadership would help determine the fate of the nation. During a routine surveying of the Union line, General Warren, chief engineer of the Army of the Potomac, found Little Round Top a terrain of immense strategic importance, undefended, with Confederate troops advancing. Realizing the urgency of the situation, General Warren sent word requesting that at least a division be sent to protect Little Round Top, the far left flank of the Union line. Vincent and his brigade were advancing down the road north of Little Round Top when an aide of General Sykes, his corps commander, approached on horseback, looking for General Barnes, his division commander. Vincent rode forward to meet him. Captain, what are your orders? Where's General Barnes? What are your orders? Give me your orders. General Sykes told me to direct General Barnes to send one of his brigades to occupy that hill yonder. I will take the responsibility of taking my brigade there. With that, Vincent ordered his brigade up the hill. Double quick when able. Vincent rode ahead to determine the placement of his brigade. From right to left, Vincent positioned the 16th Michigan, the 44th New York, the 83rd Pennsylvania, followed by the 20th Maine. When Vincent placed the 20th Maine, he told their commander, Colonel Chamberlain, I place you here. This is the end of the Union line. You are to hold this ground at all hazards. Within minutes, five regiments of Confederates began their attack up Little Round Top. After three assaults, the right side of the brigade began to weary against enemy pressure. Colonel Vincent observed the 16th Michigan falling back in a scene befitting legend, he leapt onto a boulder overlooking the Union soldiers and, wielding a riding crop given to him by his wife Elizabeth, commanded his men, Don't give an inch, boys! Don't give an inch! The Union troops on Little Round Top held their ground. But just then, a rebel bullet struck Vincent in the groin. Strong Vincent was carried to his brigade headquarters behind the 83rd Pennsylvania and then to a nearby farmhouse where he lay suffering from his mortal wound. General Meade, upon hearing of the defense of the Union left flank, telegraphed Washington recommending Colonel Vincent for promotion to Brigadier General. Two days later, word arrived that President Lincoln had approved the promotion. On July 7th, five days after receiving his mortal wound, the newly promoted general died. Vincent's remains were returned to Erie where they were interred in the Erie Cemetery. Had the Confederate Army taken Little Round Top, it would have drastically altered the course of the Battle of Gettysburg. Perhaps the Confederate Army would have gained the victory needed to create two separate nations from the United States. Brigadier General Strong Vincent's decisive action was essential to the preservation of the Union, courageously giving all he could in the service of his native land. <laughs>